Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. And of course, the same song is being written by the greatest songwriter in communist history, Barack Obama, about America. Obama, the greatest bully in the history of the presidency. I'm going to talk about bullying today. At the same time, I'm going to talk about the wit and wisdom of Michael Savage with unprotected talk. Meaning anything you want to talk about, I'll take unless it's absolutely boring or stupid or whatever. No one's going to screen it, 855-407-282, but I want to talk about bullying. The street thugs, Baltimore, bullying the cops. The ACLU in the Southern Poverty Law Center, bullying Christians. Gays, lesbians, and transgendered, bullying the whole society. Muslims, bullying the West. Obama bullying the Supreme Court. Illegal aliens in the United States bullying states, demanding things they're not entitled to. Last month, Breitbart reported about a major transit camp for Muslims coming in from Africa as they make their way into the United Kingdom, the promised land where they can live on welfare for the rest of their lives, deal drugs, stab, rape, murder, whatever they want. And the patsy British, the once proud British who no longer exist, do nothing. So they, sent, they set up hundreds of tents with porta, porta potties, uh, and they let them live in there. Well, recently, Parisian police cleared the site of these encampments, and they were opposed by who? Who opposed the Parisian police who cleared the site with tents and porta potties for the Muslim Africans who are flooding into Europe? Who do you think joined the radical Muslims who had knives? Communist students joined together in an attempt to oppose the arrival of riot police. I allege, because I know it to be true, that the Islamists, the communists, are one and the same. They have joined forces against the West. The socialist communist bloc has joined the Muslim bloc to overturn everything in the West that is of decency and replace it with chaos. Your communists... Your socialists, your Occupy movement are the new threat to your survival. As I sit here, I see it as clearly as possible, and they use bullying tactics. Everyone's afraid of them. They use the courts. They use the newspapers. Right now, it's being reported that Calais in France is a battlefield. Knife-wielding Muslims from Africa are threatening truckers with death if they don't smuggle them into the United Kingdom. Now, why would these Muslim Africans... Be so desperate as to want to get to England. Do you think they want to work? you think they're going to England to work? They're going to England to live on the dole. Rape, murder, steal, do whatever they want to do. Because they're bullies. And the English have lost their nerve. They have no nation anymore. The same thing is happening, happening here. Every day we read of radical Islamics, radical Muslims, radical Hispanics filing lawsuits demanding things they're not entitled to. College students with undocumented parents file suit claiming South Carolina, denying them scholarships and in-state tuition. You hear this one? And who is filing a lawsuit for them? None other than the criminal Southern Poverty Law Center. The Southern Poverty Law Center is a domestic legal terrorist group, in my estimation. And if there was a true Republican majority, they'd be investigated and closed down as an anti-American front group. That's right, you heard me. Meanwhile, another study coming out of San Francisco, the land of uh, diversity. All we hear about in San Francisco is diversity. You can't walk down the streets without puking. It smells of fecal matter and urine wherever you go. That's what the Democrat socialist machine has done to this beautiful city. They have let the filthy bums crap in the bushes and pee in the streets. And the cops have been rendered powerless in San Francisco by the liberal vermin who are ripping the city off, robbing it blind all the while using the homeless bums as their street thugs to intimidate the population and keep the police off their backs. To keep the police off the backs of the rotten, corrupt politicians, they run the homeless at you. They let them urinate in the streets. They let them defecate in the bushes. I went there the other day, almost threw up. 
But guess what's coming? A new study says San Francisco will be lily white in 25 years. That's right. Mr. and Mrs. Diversity, pay attention. Mr. and Mrs. Progressive, you're full of it. According to a new study by the San Francisco Foundation, the city's policies are rapidly ejecting, guess who? Blacks, Latinos, and Asians. And will become a lily white island in a heavily diverse region over the next 25 years. Listen to this. The population of African Americans in San Francisco was 13.4% in 1970. Remember that number. 1970, population of African Americans, 13%. That made blacks the second largest ethnic group compared to whites, which was 75% of the population. But by 2000, because of the communist liberal socialist thieves who run the city, who have run the city, run over the city with illegal aliens, Hispanics mainly, Blacks' share had fallen to about 8%. So it went from 13%, okay, in 1970, by 2000, because of the socialist communist criminals who are flooding the city with illegal aliens from uh, Mexico mainly, black population was run down to 8%, 8%. By 2013, blacks have been so driven out of the city, they only make up 6% of the city. Whites fell to 50% due to Asians moving up to 34% of the city's residents. But as the city becomes more expensive and more elite, Asians are moving out. Soaring housing costs, wages that are lagging well behind the cost of living are driving this change. Only the uh, high wage earners in professional technical services and finance jobs whose incomes more than doubled in the last 35 years will achieve the economic gains necessary to be able to live in San Francisco in 2040. So the SF Foundation predicts over the next 25 years that the percentage of Asian, Asians in San Fran will fall from 34% to 28%. And the Latino, which by the way is a phrase I don't use, the right word is Hispanic. Latino is a socialist phrase. So we'll use the word Hispanic. The Hispanic population will fall from 15% to 12%. And so the result will be whites moving back up from 44% to over 58%. Now, what does that mean? Nothing. It means nothing. That's all. But I thought I, I, I thought I would read it to you for all of you diverse types who celebrate diversity. 855-4072. 82 is the phone number. Today is the wit and wisdom of Michael Savage. I don't know what you want to talk about. I've given you some of the ideas that I want to talk about. Bullying by Muslims. Bullying by LGBT thugs. Bullying by street thugs against the cops. Bullying by vermin with law degrees in the ACLU and SPLC. Obama bullying everybody and everything in his way. You want to talk about any of these topics? Let's go for it. Line number three, Savage Nation. Go ahead from KSFO. What's on your mind? Yeah, so listening listening to news over in Europe, specifically Czech Republic, they're trying to allot that each country is supposed to take in a time of crisis, a certain amount of these immigrants. The problem is that in a population of 10 million people, they want to allot 20,000 of these to be integrated into the population. Now, how are they going to integrate? They never do integrate. They never will integrate. They come here to rape, to murder, to steal, and to sell drugs. Everybody knows that. The crime rates are astronomical wherever they are brought in. Let's stop lying to each other. They're not going there to work. They're going there to intimidate everybody. The they come from hell holes. Most of them are criminals. The blanket this underneath the blanket of racism. But how is it that it's racist? None. And I don't even want to use the word. The racists are those foisting them upon white European cultures. They are the real racists. But since the white European culture is ballless and has no guts anymore, they are running all over you. That's the answer. I, could. I mean, what do you want me to do, mince words, tell you what's not real? They're bullying you into submission. They're bullying you by forcing you to accept them. They never have and never will integrate. So why don't the Czech people stand up and protect their own borders? Why don't the American people protect their borders uh, with Mexico? Because we're afraid, intimidated by the gangster in the White House, the bully, the Al Capone in the White House, Barry Obama, the bully. That's why we're afraid to do anything. The bully in the White House, the thug, the dictator. It's not the will of the people. Most people hate the flood of illegals in America. 
Why? Are they racist? No, because they see the decimation of their society. They see what it's done to this society. And they're afraid to say a word. They're afraid to do anything because of the criminal thug in the White House and his dangerous sorority. That's all. I have very strong feelings on this. As you can see, I want to talk about the bullying of Obama, the bullying of the LGBT crowd, the bullying of the street thugs against the cops, the bullying of the ACLU and the Southern Poverty Law Center crumbs with their law degrees, but mainly Obama as the number one bully in the world right now. You know, he gets away with it because he's very smooth at it. The other day he intimidated the Supreme Court in advance of their decision. He threatened them, intimidated them, because he is a bully. He's used it his whole life. He has used bullying his entire life to get where he is, and nobody has ever stopped him. Nobody has ever stopped the bully in chief. WABC in New York, line five. Line five, go ahead, please. What's on your mind? Do you feel there's any hope left for the U.S.? I thought you asked me the same question yesterday. Weren't you the same caller? No. Uh, are you his twin brother or are you Siamese twins? I heard the same caller from New York. No, no. You're I'm not God, so I can't answer the question. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Nobody can get any relief. That's why they're all stoned out of their gourd on prescription drugs. Meanwhile, condemning the crack dealer on the street. They ought to condemn the doctor who gave him the, the, uh, the, the, the antidepressant. He's a bigger drug dealer than the crack dealer. Play it again. That's all. Oh, by the way, a reindeer in the Bay Area. Beautiful. Like Irish Spring. They won't report it in the paper, though. You know, it counters the whole myth of, uh, you know, that it may never be rain again. I guess Jerry Brown did a, did a rain dance somewhere in Sacramento. Imagine him naked on the roof of the state capitol praying for rain. Actually, in Jerry Brown's case, I imagine he'd do a, a rain dance praying there would be n never be rain. So they continue to gouge the taxpayer and build those speed trains to nowhere and talk about global warming. Meanwhile, the idiot in the White House, the criminal bully in the White House, you're not going to believe this story. I'm not making this up. This could come out of only a mad comic, but it's true. Obama's EPA is targeting greenhouse gas emissions from commercial aircraft. The idiot moron psychopaths, the college girls, will restrict greenhouse gas emissions from commercial jets. The latest in a long line of steps the dumb house has taken to address so-called climate change. Now, if they would begin by limiting greenhouse gas emissions from the gangsters Air Force One, Air Force Two and Air Force Three, I would say, okay, then there's some validity to it. If Al Capone's plane, if Al Capone's personal plane were to, let's say, fly on uh, banana peels or something to that effect, I would say, okay, at least they're not hypocrites. But they're going to restrict greenhouse gas emissions from your jets? How are they going to do that? The so-called EPA, the bullies in the EPA, the idiots in the EPA, will begin crafting standards and expects to formally adopt them early next year. You see, U.S. aircraft account for about 11% of greenhouse gas emissions, the agency said. And so they want to impose restrictions on the aircraft sector. I think they ought to apply it to our fighter jets, frankly, first. Because the fighter jets are terrible emitters. I mean, if you've been on an aircraft carrier and watched those F.A. 18 Hornets take off and land, I mean, you see the, the, the flame shooting out of the back of that plane. Do you realize what that's doing to the environment? And while you're at it, you ought to restrict greenhouse gas emissions from guns. I mean, there's probably not a greater greenhouse gas uh, emitter than a gun. Think every time a cop fires a bullet on a target range, every time one of our uh, soldiers... Or Marines learns how to shoot a rifle. Aren't they destroying the environment? Think of that, the waste of energy. And think of what could be done there if only one of the cockamamie crazy lawyers unleashed himself on the courts. This is an example of bullying. Not only bullying, but insane bullies. You know, there used to be an old phrase, the inmates are running the asylum. In this case, they're bullying inmates running the American asylum. These are not just inmates that you can laugh at. These are very dangerous, drug-addicted inmates who are bullying everyone in sight. 
They are dangerous, drug-addicted bullies, and they're bullying everybody with threats of lawsuit, lawsuits. So Air Force One that takes them golfing or Michelle on vacation, I think that that should be reined in. See, this administration is using the EPA and his other fascist agencies to destroy one industry at a time. They want to take down one industry at a time. Now, you're worried about greenhouse gas emissions. Then why did Air Force One and Air Force Two be used last year because Michelle wanted to fly in a different plane as her husband? How about that for a air, uh, uh, air greenhouse gas emission? Michelle and her entourage in Air Force One. Obama on Air Force Two. Why? Why? Tell me why. How about the fleet that Congress uses to to jet around the world. How about Nancy Pelosi's use of military jets? Yeah, okay, you get the picture. It's the mother of all shakedowns. It is the largest theft of wealth the world will ever have seen. The science is not clear at all. There's no science here. It's Lysenkoism. It's invented science. East Anglia University manipulated data to reflect global warming when there was no global warming. You understand that? They just changed the hockey stick into a, a, a putty ball. The only reason Obama has waged a war on coal is for what reason? To make sure the gangsters in the green business profit from it. The gangsters in the green energy business have profited like you've never seen in your life because they're bullies and thieves. We're going to talk about bullies and thieves when I return right here on The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Wherever you go, you will encounter people who doubt your very existence. Folks who believe that hardworking families with strong values don't exist on the south side of Chicago, or in Detroit, or in El Paso, or in Indian country, or in Appalachia. They don't believe you are real. So she's become one of the chief bullies now in America. Whatever happened to the quiet first lady, the dignified first lady, the first lady who did civic things? How did she suddenly become such a bully? Uh, any other questions? Because I have the answers. We're talking about bullying. And we're talking about the bully pulpit. In this case, it truly is inhabited by bullies. 855-407-282 is the phone number. We're talking about many topics, mainly bullying. And everyone who gets on the show will get a free copy of my novel, Countdown to Mecca, perfect for Father's Day, which is only, what, two weeks away. And I hope you celebrate fathers because it's all we've got left. Whether you like your father or not, he's your father. He ain't heavy, father. He's my father. Remember that one from Boys Town? He ain't heavy, father. He's my brother. I used to love that one. I never knew what it meant. They'd always touch me, that Boys Town thing. I never knew it. Like the kid was carrying another guy in the home, and he used to say, he ain't heavy, father. He's my brother. That was a beautiful organization, Boys Town. Maybe some of the left-wing vermin now can uncover some crime committed against boys in Boys Town to, to take away the, the dream that we had of some decent people on earth. Let's see, they've destroyed the Catholic Church and turned it into a, a useless organ. What else can they go after now? They've trampled our flag. They've trampled our country. What's left? Tell me what's left. These bullies. I'd like to know when there's going to be a counter-bullying in this country. Man, I'd like to see an army of 10 million counter these bullies. I'd love to see them stand up and scream in their faces. You know, wherever I go, I run into bullies, whether it's a nasty Prius driver on the highway trying to cut me off in the right lane with an Obama-Biden bumper sticker from 2008. Everywhere I turn, there's a bully. This morning, for example, I went to the supermarket with my dog, Teddy. And I'm shopping, not, bo not bothering anybody. And I'm checking out. It was just jammed in the supermarket. All of the mothers were getting their coffee and giving their children uh, donuts and coffee before sending them off with their current medication to, to the government school. And I swear to God, I'm standing on the checkout line. I had a lot of items, like two bags worth. And there was a woman behind me, middle-aged, decently dressed, 40 years old. Did you ever get someone who tries to push you through the, the thing that's just moving with the turn? It's moving like with your stuff on it. She has to put her coffee right. I'm talking an inch away from your stuff. 
and you're not through unloading your cart. And I look at her and say, excuse me, lady, I'm not finished yet. Could you take your flowers and coffee? I don't want to hurt your flowers and spill your coffee. She says, oh, my, you have nice radishes. I said, okay, fine. She said, my, my radishes were nice, very nice. All right, so she takes back the flowers and coffee and lets me have the conveyor belt back. Meanwhile, the clerk is ringing and ringing and zinging, and I'm moving up to the cash thing. And you know there's a little shelf right next to where you slide your card? where most normal people put their wallet or whatever they took the card out of, where you sign the, the bill. This woman puts her hot coffee cup on that shelf. I look at her. I said, lady, what's wrong with you? Why are you pushing like this? You know what she said? Nothing. Another drug addict in Marin County. Another Stepford wife. Another drug-addicted Stepford wife in Marin County. There are bullies everywhere, on the low level, on the high level. We're living in a new age. Yesterday I talked about the millennials boy did i get did i get heat for that one they said you can't say all millennials are bad i said i'm talking as a social commentator and i still allege that the millennials will turn out to be the worst generation in american history the beatniks gave birth to the hippies the hippies gave birth to the yuppies the yuppies gave birth to the millennials they're the end line of the beatnik and the millennials are without conscience. They're like the Khmer Rouge of uh, China or of, uh, more specifically, like Cambodia. I don't mean they're actually going to throw you into a grave. I don't mean they're going to kill you. But they're like the Khmer Rouge. They, ha they seem to have no conscience. They seem to be zombie-like. No care, no feelings. They have no emotions. They, have, they seem to have no emotions other than getting what they want from the me generation to the I generation. Seems that the I generation, the iPhone, came along about the same time. So I'm not very optimistic that this generation is going to save the country, incidentally, going back to that question. I think they'd roll over to anyone who, who raises their voice to them. They've been raised by bullies in the schools. They're intimidated by everybody and everything. And they have no feelings whatsoever for senior citizens in particular. So if you think that Obamacare is going to come along and save you, and the millennial has a choice between pulling your plug or keeping you alive? Get back to me on that one. WABC in New York, Line 9, go ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Yeah, I think uh, Obama has bullied his last two, his two appointments to the Supreme Court to leak information about pending decisions to him. You think that he's getting information from Sotomayor, the most brilliant Latina in the history of the universe? And, and that other one, the, the bowling set or whatever her name is. Yeah. In my day, she would have been, the other, in my day, the most she could have done was run a pickle store on Rivington Street. I forget her name. What a Supreme Court justice that one is. I think. What, you, you think that they're leaking to him? Yes, because I don't think he would have made those statements the other day. If he knew that he didn't. You're talking about him threatening the Supreme Court from, uh, while he was in Germany? We have that sound by Robert? Let's listen to the bully in chief talking from Germany. Under well-established statutory uh, interpretation uh, approaches that uh, have been repeatedly employed, not just by liberal Democratic judges, but by conservative uh, judges like uh, uh, some on the current Supreme Court, yeah, like you interpret a statute name? based on what the intent and meaning and the overall structure of the statute uh, provides for. And so All right. this he, should he, be. He's telling them how to interpret the law. You hear this? Now he's suddenly on the Supreme Court. He's the Supreme Supreme Justice, the bully in chief. He's committing statutory rape by doing this. He's trying to rape the Supreme Court in advance. He's scaring them that he's going to do something to them. My God, what a piece of work this thing is. All right. I get the picture. I get the, most people don't care. The millennials don't even hear what I'm saying. They're listening to, uh, I don't know, they don't listen to talk radio. We hear, that it's a, we hear that talk radio is aimed only at the dying population of old white men. Well, hey, old white men, welcome to the Savage Nation. Let's enjoy the uh, fall together. Are you kidding me? That's the only audience for talk radio? Who do you believe? That's true? How do you explain that I have a 25 share on devices? Who's listening to me on devices? 70-year-olds or 20-year-olds? Who's listening to Michael Savage, the most listened to streaming talk radio show in the United States of America? Who's listening to me, the millennials or the perennials? Who's listening to me? 
Who do you think's listening to me on iPhones and Androids and things like that nature? The young millennials who know what's going on. The very few who do. The very few who are homeschooled. The very few who are Christian. The very few who understand what patriotism is. The very few who come from a military or a police family. They're the backbone of America. Not the drug-addicted left-wing fanatics who have been bullied into submission. That's who I'm talking about. Don't tell me that the only people listening to this radio show are old people. And if it was, so what? You should be ashamed if you're an old person. Suddenly being older is, is a shame in America. What, it became a, a, a thing of pride to be an 18-year-old moron? No, I don't think so. WABC Online, go ahead, you're on the Savage Nation. Doc, thank you. Um, I actually had uh, talked to you at the end of last year. All right, all right, what's on your mind? Go ahead. We're talking about the uh, millennials here. Now, we grew up with the sense from the uh, Depression era that you needed to save, you needed to work, you needed... Well, wait, I, I didn't come through the Depression era. I'm not that old. You're that old? I know. Our parents... Right. Apart. Okay, that's true. Our parents told, always told me about the Depression, how hor horrible it was. <clears throat> Don't spend more than you make. <clears throat> make sure you save money. Don't count on the government. That's how I was raised. That's true. And that's how you raised your kids. A hundred percent right. I made my children work when they were 14 years old. My son used to take a bus to go to work in Wendy's. Would you believe that? And his friends laughed at him. They laughed at him. He used to take a bus into the uh, poorer neighborhoods to work in Wendy's and put a hat on. And I said, look, son, I'm not doing this because I want to punish you. I want you to understand what it is to make a dollar. And he understood me. I always used to pay him to do yard work. Would you believe that? I showed him value for labor. And if he wanted something, he'd have to work for it. But guess what? He did better than all his friends put together by a, a margin of 20 because he learned what the work ethic is in this country of gimme, gimme, gimme. Oh, that's, that's really the point of why I was calling because they've had everything given to them that to a point where they still expect it as nauseam to continue. All right, and they want more. There's no, no limit to a person who wants something for free and gets it. They want more and more and more, don't they? Oh, absolutely. It's never ending. Never ending. Never. never ending. So what do we do about it? We have a whole generation sitting here waiting to, to take more from society, uh, turning on its face. Uh, JFK's great statement, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. And these millennials are saying, I don't care about my country. All I want to know is what it can do for me. Well, like with any generation, those kids will go by the waysides. And the one that you speak of, you know, that come from the families that still pass this information on will be the ones that survive, Mike. All right, my friend, I'm going to send you Countdown to Mecca for Father's Day. Enjoy it. 855-400-7282. Should I read the sex scene from uh, Countdown to Mecca? Someone said they like that scene. I don't even know which one he's talking about. I didn't know I wrote a, a love scene in it. I did this once with my first book on the air, and a lot of women hated me for it. I don't know why. What, love and romance is not allowed in a novel? It wasn't dirty. I'm not a liberal. It was a beautiful scene. I can't find it, though. And then you'll think I'm appealing to your prurient interests. I like that word, prurient. Purient, prurient interests. I never understood that word. There was a better word for it than prurient interests. The whole society is prurient right now. All of a sudden, everywhere you turn, it's filthy. There's nothing clean about the society. What, I don't know what I want to do right now. I'm fed up with it all. I re I'm fed up with the society. I feel like starting a revolution. If I was a politician, that's what I would do. If I were running for office, I wouldn't just be a meek taking it from the, from the media type. I would demand a revolution in the country to save it. That's what I would do. I wouldn't even mince words. Just say, I want a revolution in the borders language and, of borders language and culture. Period. That's what I stand for. If I'm elected, it's going to be a revolution in this country. The military will be taken out of South Korea and, and, and Germany and put on the border with Mexico. With bayonets, if necessary. We'll put tanks on the border. English only especially at the ballot box. Do you know in this sick, twisted city, this corrupt city of San Francisco, the vermin who run it, made it legal for uh, the, the voter pamphlets to be published in six or eight different languages? Why? That's to make sure that the criminal gang stays in power. They have been put in power by the gangsters. The gangsters have been kept in power by the illegal aliens they have ushered into the city. If you can't read English, you don't vote in my country. If you can't write English, you don't vote in my country. That's language. Do I have to spell it out for you? And I'll tell you what the revolution in culture is. I can make it very simple for you. I can spell it out for you very clearly. 
This nation was built upon Judeo-Christian values. If you don't like it, it's too damn bad. No, we're not Wiccans. No, we're not Muslims. No, we are not those things. You can be it if you want, but you're not going to tell us this nation was founded by a bunch of devil worshippers, and you're not going to tell us the nation was founded by Muslims because it was not. We don't chop people's hands off if they steal. We don't throw rocks at women who commit adultery. We don't throw homosexuals off roofs. This country was founded on justice and peace in the Judeo-Christian manner. Borders, language, and culture, that's my revolution. If you don't like it, it's too damn bad. Vote for me or don't vote for me. It's a simple message. And I don't care what they would say to me. I wouldn't care what one of these little rats with a, with a microphone say, ask me a question. I'll tell them, I don't care what you think about me. Go report anything you want. New York Times doesn't mean anything. You don't represent America. You're garbage. You're garbage and filth, and most of the country knows it. Drop dead. Get away from me. I'm talking to the voter, not you. That's what borders, language, and culture stands for. You want to bully me? I'll bully you back. How would you, how would you like a candidate like that? I bet you'd vote for him. You want my policies? You want more of my policies? I'll give them to you as the show evolves. I've had enough of this. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Stand up to the progressive Islamic bullies in this country who are going to kill all of us. Stand up to the gangsters in the White House and their surroundings. Stand up to the progressive phonies who are bullying you at every turn. Now, many of you don't believe this is happening because the media continues to bend over backwards to support a president who will not even say the word Islamic when he talks about the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. They call themselves ISIS, the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. And yet this gangster in the White House won't even use the word Islamic. They call themselves Islamic, but he says they aren't. Nevertheless, in this country, in every conceivable space, from immigration policy to law enforcement to education to social policy to the military, Islam is accommodated and defended while Christianity and Judaism are attacked. Left-wing publications print completely false stories about university campus rapes, military rapes that don't exist, while ISIS forces eight-year-old girls to marry if they're Muslim and become sex slaves if they aren't. Where are the feminists who are outraged over these atrocities? Why aren't gay activists marching in the streets over ISIS throwing homosexuals off rooftops? I'll tell you why. They're too busy bullying Christian bakeries and pizzerias out of business for not wanting to bend at the knee to their homosexual weddings. Meanwhile, the Obama bullies have refused to curb illegal immigration through our southern border or to deport them once they're caught in violation of the bully's oath. But let me tell you something. Illegal immigrants from Central and South America are not the biggest immigration threat facing us. Much more dangerous are the hundreds of thousands of Muslims this administration has brought in through its refugee program from war-torn Muslim countries such as Somalia and now Syria. What possible reason can there be for admitting more Muslim refugees than Christian when Christians are being slaughtered by the thousands in the new Holocaust in the Middle East? Why bring in the people sworn to kill us and leave those being killed? defend for themselves because the bullies want it that way it's divide and conquer they're very very clever these sorority girls aren't they this is the savage nation be here or be nowhere i'm michael savage borders language culture join the savage nation call now 855-400-SAVAGE 855-400-7282 Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. So we have a nation of sleepwalkers run by bullying gangsters 
overriding the population, threatening the Supreme Court, breaking our borders, spitting on our language, decimating our culture. And now it comes out. Here's the cherry on the cake. The Frankenstein in the White House, who's been trying to push this trade deal with Asia, it's just found out just now there's a secret immigration clause or chapter in Obama's trade agreement that would give him ultimate authority over all immigration. He could bypass Congress completely. And what's amazing to me is that Ted Cruz was for this. How many, how long have I told you Ted Cruz was a weasel? I have no idea how so many smart people in the media were taken in by Ted Cruz. How could you not look right through that guy and know he's not a weasel? Why would he be in favor of this? And why would uh, you vote for a guy like whatever his name is, the ice cream man, Rubio? I know you're all defending him over the motorboat because that, that's the, the uh, topic du jour. That he has an 80,000 motorboat and it doesn't mean he's rich. That's your big topic on earth, you hear? Three hours now people talk about uh, his motorboat isn't really a yacht. I don't care whether he has a yacht or a motorboat. I care that he's just a stooge of Larry Ellison. My poodle has more independence than Rubio does. My poodle has more of a spine than Rubio does. My poodle has more self-respect than Rubio does. Rubio is a paid stooge of Larry Ellison. Now, why would Larry Ellison, a genius, owns Oracle, why would he latch on to this ice cream man, Rubio? Because Rubio is in favor of amnesty for illegal aliens and as many H-1B visas as Larry wants to print. Zuckerberg, Larry, Microsoft, they all want to print H-1B visas in order to replace IT workers. Why is that? Don't they have enough money? How many yachts can they own? How many castles can they own? How many islands can they own? How much money can they make? There's no end to it. They're like the nowhere men in the Beatles thing from the 1960s. They're sucking themselves into their own horn of greed. Greed has no limits. Greed is a nymphomania. Greed is like a nymphomania amongst these people. There is not enough money in the world. There's not enough gold in the world for these nymphomaniacs. These nymphomaniacs who are decimating American workers, bringing in Indians to replace them like Disney did. So Michael Iger can make more than $46 million next year. A greedy mentality unlike anything we have seen since the Aztecs were decimated by the Spaniards. Write this one down in your history books. When the conquistadors came from Spain to uh, enslave and kill and rob the gold out of the Americas, there was not enough gold in the, in, the, in the area for them. And after they'd almost destroyed the entire Aztec culture, one of the surviving uh, natives said they have a disease. The Spaniards have a disease, the gold disease, for which there is no cure. There is not enough gold in the world for these Spaniards. And, of course, the rest is history. I say the same is true for Ellison, Microsoft's founder, or Bill Gates, Zuckerberg. All of these people are like the uh, conquistadors. There's not enough gold for them. There's not enough profit for them. There's no end to it. They would decimate the country that gave them their power and their wealth in the name of a better bottom line. So as I said in the last hour, and it's a hard hour to follow, I admit it. I'm the hardest act in the world to follow, especially when I do a great first hour, which I did. But I can guarantee you I'll top it in this hour. Not initially. I'm slow starting sometimes. First hour, I talked about bullying, and I ended with talking about what I would do if I were a candidate, how I would treat the media, and what I stood for. And if you missed it, well, I'm not going to repeat it. Let's see where we go with that right now on the Savage Nation, 855-400-7282. This is unbelievable. Are you ready for this one? Here is the gangster-in-chief, the biggest bully in the history of America, at the Catholic Health Association conference, again trying to push the big lie that immigrants come here to work in clip number 06. The rugged individualism that defines America has always been bound by a sheer set of values, an enduring sense that we're in this together, that America is not a place where we simply turn away from the sick or turn our backs on the tired, the poor, the huddled masses. It is a place sustained by the idea, I am my brother's keeper, I am my sister's keeper, that we have an obligation to put ourselves in our neighbor's shoes and see each other's common humanity. First of all, it's a big lie. Let me explain to you where that phrase came from. Give me your tired, your poor, and the huddle, and your huddle, huddle masses. It's a statement on the Statue of Liberty itself. Many of you think that the same rules apply now. We did not have a massive welfare state when that was written. 
We didn't have a welfare state where the tired, the poor, and the huddled masses could come and sit on their fat behinds and not make a, a contribution to our society and sit there and breed children, breed children and suck us dry. No, it was a different time when it was written, give me your tired, your poor, and your huddled masses. My grandfather was one of those huddled masses. He didn't come here on welfare. Came here, worked seven days a week and had a heart attack at 47 and died. He was one of the huddled masses. He didn't go for Obamacare. He didn't get any free, you no know, handouts. Nobody was waiting for him with a, with a check and a lawsuit. No one told him that, that he didn't have to learn English. They told him, get online, Sam, and learn English or you're never going to vote here. So he learned English. Don't give me this crap about the tired, the sick, and the huddled masses. That statement was written by, I think, Emma Goldman. Will you check it out, Robert? I think it was Emma Goldman. I'm pretty sure. And uh, again, mark it down because I'm educating you today. That phrase was written when there was no welfare state. We have a welfare state. Now, we can't afford all the tired, the poor, and the huddled masses of the world. And the gangster knows that. The bully knows that. 855-407-282 is the phone number. Meanwhile, the Middle East is burning. Everyone's fearing it's 1914. Everyone now fears a war, a giant war, pitting Shia Muslims against Sunni. Everyone fears that except the sorority that's causing it. Everyone fears it except a daddy long legs in the White House. The amazing, shriveling president. The man shrinking right in front of our eyes. Losing weight. I actually worried for him. I wish him no harm. I just wish they would impeach him and arrest him for the crimes against America. Why is he losing so much weight? What's wrong with him? What illness does he have? Am I as a citizen not allowed to ask? The man's suit size has gone down about five sizes. It looks like he's gone down three or four sizes in the last year. What's going on with Obama? I'm not allowed to ask, right? The king has no clothes. I didn't notice that. I didn't know that he's shriveling up and shrinking. What's wrong with him? Does he have an illness? I hope not. I pray not. I hope that he gets well. What illness does he have? I know he has a mental illness of progressivism. I know that that's an illness that's incurable, but maybe the physical illness can be treated by the geniuses at, at the hospitals there. Unbelievable to me. He has no complete ISIS strategy. He's waiting for it. President of the United States, most powerful military, he has no complete ISIS strategy. I guess the girl who writes it for him was away on vacation with her, with her wife and hasn't been written yet. When she comes back from the honeymoon with her wife, she can write the ISIS strategy, her and her girlfriend. That's the administration. Huh? Yeah, go ahead. Play it again. Play it when again, uh, a finalized plan is presented to me by the Pentagon, then I will share it with the American people. It's not, uh, I, we don't yet have uh, a, uh, a complete strategy because it requires commitments on the part of the Iraqis as well a deep breath, uh, about how recruitment takes place, how, how that training bowels. takes place. Uh, and so bowels. the details of that are, are not yet worked out. Sickening. Any other president would have been called into a mental hospital for an evaluation by five psychiatrists because they would say, look, Johnny, it's not selling. Listen, Johnny, whatever you just said, we all heard you were whistling in the dark. We know what you're talking about, and the world's uh, in trouble now. So you're coming into a board of psychiatrists for an analysis. We're worried for the country and the world because you're a nut. You're a clear nut, Johnny. Okay, so you're coming in for a test, a full battery of mental tests, because we don't, we don't know what's going on. You're losing weight. You're not making sense. We hear you're lying. When we hear you stretch out the vowels like, how? We know you're inventing. We know when you suck in air just before you say something, you're lying. We have the CIA voice analyst who told us that. They just listened to your speech. When you stretch out the vowels, we know you're thinking for your next uh, whopper. And when you hear that one, you hear, and you know when the next whopper is coming. When you hear him sucking in air like... <laughs> You know what's coming next? <clears throat> the next inhalation of the electronic cigarette outside where no one can see it. So anyway, you get the picture? Yeah, I think you get the picture. Okay, let's go to the callers. M-A-L, Washington, D.C. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Line six? Yeah, you're on the air. Go ahead, please. I'd just like to point out that the United States does not have an official language. So for you to say that anyone who comes to this country needs to learn English is completely uninformed and... Actually, that's that's right, millennial. You millennial, you, you facile millennial. The United States has no official language. Is that true? It's true. The United States does not have. It is true, Mister Millennial. That's why I say we need an official language called English, where ballots will only be in the English language, Mister Millennial. Oh, so you like a Tower of Babel? Do you know any other nation on Earth that prints ballots in every other language but its own? 
No, I'm not saying every other language, but languages that are popularly spoken in each. Oh, yeah, uh, popular languages. You would make one up. The language du jour. Arabic, Spanish, Tagalog, Korean, Chinese, you name it. Yeah, the, in, I live in New York City, and it's one of the most diverse cities in the entire world. Isn't that wonderful? Do you feel proud that you live in such a diverse city? Does it give you a sense of civic pride, your diversity? I think that celebrating culture... Is it this diversity that built America? Is that what you're talking about? This great diversity that you're trumpeting, is that what built America? Illegal aliens pouring out of, the, out of every corner of America, that's what built the country? Mm-hmm. What do you mean, um-hum? What do you give me, um-hum? The illegal immigration only started under Bill Clinton. What do you mean, um-hum? Do you know anything about history? There used to be an orderly immigration policy in the country. And although America welcomed immigrants, it was a melting pot, not a chamber pot. Do you know the difference between a melting pot and a chamber pot? Of course I know the difference. All right, take a walk, millennial. Go have a frappuccino on me. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. diverge for one minute on something you know we live and die in the radio business like everyone in the media by ratings and we get ratings maybe once a month that's all we get and although i'm not allowed to read you the ratings i violate some kind of trust i can tell you generically something or other i'm going to give you an example just so you know who you're listening to and just so you know how popular the show really is you're not reading about it in the daily news the new york post the new york times the la times i'm blacklisted in america fox news has blacklisted me as have the progressive vermin in the media so I have to be my own salesman. But you are the audience. And I'm going to read you one station on the east and one on the west. New York City, powerhouse WABC, in the 12-plus audience, Michael Savage is number one on that station in the day part. Period. End of story. That's it. That's reality. I live and die by those words. Michael Savage, number one, WABC 12-plus. Period. Fact. Now let's go to the west coast. How am I doing on the west coast? Well, I'm blacked out in Los Angeles. Blacklisted in L.A. because of Katzenberg, Katzenberg, Matzenberg, and Ratzenberg. But in San Francisco, where the show emanates, 25 to 54, Michael Savage is number one, 12 to 3 p.m. Number one on KSFO, Michael Savage, 25 to 54. Put that into your progressive pipes and smoke it. So don't tell me I have no audience, and don't tell me I'm marginal, and don't tell me this is a dying audience. <clears throat> this is a growing audience. It's a booming audience. And he said, well, it's only old white guys. Well, I love old white guys. They built America, number one. Number two, it's not only old white guys. I'm number one on streaming radio, meaning anyone who listens to talk radio on a streaming device, iPhone, Android, whatever. I'm number one with a 25 share. Rush has a 12 share. Check it out. You're not going to read it in the New York Times, Daily News, New York Post, or see it on Fox News. Martha Washington hates me because she knows I'm on to her. I can look right through her crinoline. And I see the same thing in her that I see in Rubio. God bless her. I wish her well. But don't expect to hear about this on Fox News. So I have to be my own salesman. Thanks for listening. 855 Anyone who could find the sex scene in uh, Countdown to Mecca, I'll give you a free book. I can't even find my own sex scene in the book. I don't know where it is. Oh, wait, I just got a listener who emailed me. He says, page 73. I want to see if it's, if it's not, if it's lewd, I'm not reading it. This is a family show. It's different than a book. Oh, it's him and who? Page 73. He's eating gnocchi here. Where's the sex scene? I don't understand. He's eating gnocchi. That's sexual? I don't know. Who, who sent this to me? While they were locked together. Oh, oh, okay. They had gnocchi. Then they, I get it. That's the best tasting gnocchi I ever had, said Jack. While they were locked together in the primal entanglement, Jack sought to stare straight in her eyes. He didn't look away. Dover was different, slim to the point of skinny. Her slender muscularity turned on neurons he didn't know still existed in him. With her like this, it wasn't, it wasn't solely the sexual contact and release that kept him hooked. It was her being itself that drew him in. As their writhing entanglement reached its point of frenzy, Jack's brain heard Horace Silver's horn reaching for the impossible note. 
Just as Silva had maxed his lungs in the natives are restless tonight, seeking that impossible note, Jack felt something almost snap as he sought the perfect bond with Dover. She pulled at him with her athletic strength. Jack, Jack, in a small tear. Jack thought it doesn't matter if you hit that note. All that matters is reaching with all your talents. That's a sex scene. That's something you wouldn't expect from the vermin like Louis C.K. or Howard Stern. Submorons. All they know how to do is say dirty little things like the filthy little boys that they are. But you're listening to a man writing about sexuality between a man and a woman. And I'm proud of it. I'm not one of those filthy garbage cans that run Hollywood. I can do it without making you blush. I can do it and make you understand the beauty between man and woman. I can do it and have you understand what I'm talking about without having to resort to the gutter like Louis C.K. or Howard Stern or any of the other filthy, dirty, ugh, part and parcel of the meltdown of the country, the filth of America. Glad I got that out of my system. Time for a quick call or 10 when I come back. We're talking about bullying by Barack Bully Obama, by Michelle Bully Obama, by the media bullying you, by the LGBTs bullying you, by Muslims bullying Christians in the Middle East, by the ACLU and the Southern Poverty Law Center bullying you in the courts, by illegal aliens in the U.S. bullying states for rights they're not entitled to. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses? Yeah, right. Not when you have a socialist state paying for their way. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Turn it off. I don't want to hear it. It's not made for the show. I'd rather hear Horace Silver, the natives are restless tonight, because you hear him reaching for that high note that no one can hit. And the important thing... Well, we knocked that off already, my email. I leave it on during the show. I never remember to hit the, 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 the thing there. He always tells me I have mail, like I can't see it. Horace Silver, in reaching for the high note, in his great jazz piece, The Natives Are Restless Tonight, I say, seeking that impossible note, Jack felt something almost snap as he sought the perfect bond with Dover. You get it? We all, we all reach for that high note. It doesn't matter if you hit it. So the scene ends with, Jack thought it doesn't matter if you hit that note. All that matters is reaching with all your talents. You get it? Whether it's in sex, music, poetry, art, science, whatever you're doing, reach for the high note. Doesn't matter if you hit it. Just keep reaching for it. Bravo, Michael. So who gets invited to the White House next, says an emailer. A head of state or Caitlyn Jenner? <laughs> who gets invited to the White House next? A head of state or Caitlyn Jenner with the, uh, the thin man? Hmm. And how soon after he's out of office does he give an exclusive interview to Salon about his, uh, let us say, his uh, interests? His, uh, his interests in that direction. Then he could be the first, uh, yeah, president, whatever. 855-407-282. This is the Savage Nation. What do you want to talk about? Bullying? Let's go for it. We're living in a country that's being, we're bullied day and night. Bully. Obama's whole MO is bullying. He got where he is by bullying everybody. Oh, you don't like me? You must be a racist. Oh, you don't like me? You, don't, uh, you must be a, a pig capitalist. Oh, you don't like Michelle? You must be a sexist. Oh, you don't believe in Michelle? You must be a racist. As they jet off on Air Force One and Two, they're, they're going to constrain the, the uh, carbon emissions on everyone else's plane but theirs. What a bunch of phony hypocrites. Boo on them. I'm sick of them. It's like two gangster liars took over the country. I was supposed to sit here and not say a word about it. I feel like something broke in me today, like a dam broke. I can't take it anymore. He's a liar. He's a BS artist and a criminal as far as I'm concerned. Broke our borders, broke our language, broke our culture. But the millennials, oh, they don't care as long as they can go uh, truck, food truck hopping. They think they're visiting Peru because they get a, a, a taco on a, on a Peruvian food truck. In their idea, they just had a multicultural experience. They just contributed to the third world by buying a taco at a Mexican, a Mexican truck somewhere, a roach coach. That's their idea of, uh, uh, of multiculturalism. <clears throat> yeah, okay. So let me be very clear. First of all, it was Emma Lazarus who wrote that stupid statement, give me your tired, your poor, and your huddled masses. Not Emma Goldman. Emma Goldman was a famous communist who was thrown out of America. In those days, they deported communists. They deported her. If me, I was president... I bring back QAC, the House of Un-American Activities Committee, number one, and I would deport anyone who was working against the interests of this country. 
Oh, my God. You're kidding me. How McCarthy-esque can you get, Michael? Man, I love McCarthy. He was an actual tail gunner in World War II. I don't have to tell you who his enemies were in World War II. They're working with the, the, the Goldmans, whatever their name was, the, the two of them that got, got fried in the Sing Sing for giving away our nuclear secrets to the, to the Russians. What were their names, the two of them, the two heroes of the left? Yeah, okay, fellow travelers, in other words. House of Un-American Activities Committee, let's, let's go for it. Let's have a, a UAC committee, again, run by real Americans, returning military veterans who actually fought in the wars. I'm not talking about those gold brickers with the, with the, with the, 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 the epaulettes who do nothing. I'm not talking about the military contractors sitting waiting to cash in. I'm talking about combat veterans. Put them on UAC and start bringing people before UAC. Then you'll see a country that comes together and saves itself. That's right. You heard me. And by the way, there's a word called deportation. You get people working against America, such as the ACLU, deport them all. I throw them all out of the country. I deport the entire Southern Poverty Law Center. I deport the entire lot of them and take all, their, all, all of the unearned money that they stole from people. They stole from people with the courts, with their rotten judges. That's what this country needs. The country needs exactly what I'm saying. I know what this country needs to save it. You want to talk about immigration? Let's talk about it. No more immigrants. End of story. Close the borders. Sort out those who've come in here legally and illegally. And you could start very easily and very logically. Who disagrees with this one? First, deport all the illegal aliens in our prisons. That's one third of the population. Get rid of them. Send them back to their home countries. And if the home country doesn't want them, I don't know, work out a deal with Russia. Build uh, internment camps for them somewhere in, in Siberia. Get them out of our country. We don't need them here. One third of all prisoners are illegal aliens. Deport them. Let's start with that. That would send a little chilling effect on their relatives sitting here on welfare. And the money that they're scamming in the, in the prisons. Get them out of here. One third of all prisoners. Get rid of them immediately overnight. That would start the ball rolling. Would have a little snowballing effect. And while you're at it, get rid of the immigration attorneys with them. Let them move to the countries they love so much. All these greedy little NYU graduates. Yeah, they don't like immigrants. They just like bullying everybody with the mentality that they're on, on the side of the poor and the downtrodden. The opposite is true. 855-407-282. I don't know if I want to take any calls. Oh, here's one. Jimmy on WABC, line four. Go ahead, please. My goal, seven days in the street I got. New York City transit bus operator. When that person, uh, uh, Bruce Jenner, appeared on the Daily News. I said, I think he's disgusting. I said, last time I saw this person, he was on a box of Wheaties. I was a kid. I said, I think it's a disgrace what's coming down to this country. A woman, and I was talking to a passenger, a woman in the back of the bus called my boss. They called me in the office. I got seven days in the street. And okay, what this is pure, unadulterated Hitler Nazism by the LGBT community. That's right. And seven days in the This is Hitler Nazism reporting on your neighbor. I don't care if they have a, a man's part or a woman's part or no part. I don't care what they are. They're little Nazis if they do a thing like that. Seven days in the street means no pay. So what do they they make complaints? Why? Because I have an opinion? Because I open my mouth? What must that be? A robot? I told you that the LGBT community is the biggest group of bullies in the United States of America right now. Everybody's afraid of them. I'm not afraid, and that's why I'm in trouble. Well, wait a minute. They could suspend you because a passenger didn't like what you said? No, they can't. They did suspend me. She called up, made a complaint. They called me in the office. They said, put in your badge, get out, and you come back. Well, hold, hold, hold. Let's slow down. You said something to who? To the passengers? I'm driving 26 years. They know me. They talk to me. They go, Jimmy, what do you think about it? I said, I think this person, this freak, is a disgrace on the paper. And what is it going to do to the minds of the kids growing up? And the lady in the back of the bus heard me. She called because they give them all their phone numbers to the bosses. They called, told me. And who's sitting there in the boss's chair in the, in the transit company? Another one? one? One of our brethren? Who are we now? But they gave me seven days, and that's a lot of money to lose. Yeah, well, it's, it's out of the Nazi playbook when a neighbor reported neighbor and children reported parents. That's what's happened in America. Under this issue of bullying, they are the biggest bullies the country's ever seen. Now, have you gotten a lawyer? Is there a union lawyer to represent you? The union lawyer 
goes in with the bosses. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I know. I uh, don't get me started on lawyers, union lawyers. I remember I was a I was once a union member as a teacher. The union took the side of management and shafted me. They're worthless. Most unions are are worthless. They they don't take the side of the worker. Right. So they gave me seven days in the street, no pay. I don't know what I'm going to do. So what if you get a lawyer to take your case and sue the uh? What, what's the name of the bus company, by the way? Is it the City Bus Company? New York City Transit Authority. Well, I happen I happen to think that you can sue the New York City Transit Authority. Not only get your job back, but sue them for damages. Now, I'm going to say, uh, hold on now, hold on. I'm guessing now I'm not an attorney, Jimmy. I don't like people being bullied. I don't care if the bullying is done by uh, the LGBTs or anyone else. I want a lawyer listening to this show who will take Jimmy's case uh, pro bono. Is there a lawyer in this country, liberal, conservative, who will take Jimmy's case and go after the transit authority and sue on his behalf? So, Jimmy, here's what we're going to do for you. I don't know if we're going to get one, but I'm going to put you on hold. Let's hold Jimmy on hold. Get Jimmy's contacts. If the law, if a lawyer calls, put him up. We'll put the lawyer up. He can be anonymous, and we'll put them in touch. Maybe we can get Jimmy his his back pay, and maybe Jimmy can get some justice in this sick, demented nation where anybody who has a straight view is being bullied day and night. Period. End of story. That's reality. That's the bullying I'm talking about. KSFO, San Francisco. Charles, go ahead, please. You're on the Savage Nation. Dr. Savage, I'm a teacher. I, I teach in a very liberal state of Massachusetts, and I have, I have seen firsthand how people on the left will bully teachers, bully other students. Uh, in my, my school, there's actually a rainbow flag flying out in front of the school, and the school basically op openly endorses the homosexual agenda. And it's That's right, because the gay movement, what are you, in San Francisco where the gays have bullied everybody? Uh, Boston, actually. Oh, but Boston, another prize of a city. Yeah. Another tolerant city that got overrun by the bullies. Now, the thing with the left is if they're all for free speech, provided you agree with them on any issue. They're not for free speech at all. They're all bullies. They're little fascists, all of them. And by the way, I'm not the only one saying it anymore. I've been saying it for 21 years. But even a liberal like Seinfeld has stopped working the college circuit because he's been called racist, homophobic, everything else under the sun by these bullies. You know that? Yep. But, uh, so that's what's going on. Okay, let me send you a copy of Countdown to Mecca. It's still legal, by the way. It's still in bookstores. They haven't gathered it up and burnt it yet in front of the Barnes and Nobles. I haven't seen the little Nazis come out yet and take my books and throw them into a bonfire of the of the unvanities. I haven't seen them create a bonfire yet of books. The little Nazis called progressive socialists. The little fascists who want to start a civil war in America. That's what I'm saying. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. It is the Savage Nation. I don't know where the two hours went. I don't know how it went so fast, but I'm on fire today for reasons I don't even understand. Maybe I just can't take any more of the lies. And the, I can't take it. The duplicity is getting me crazy. Every time he opens his mouth, I get crazier from this guy. The man is lying so clearly you can't take it. We all know all politicians are, are bold, BS artists, okay? We know that's what the word politician you look at or what, what expect. But this one thinks he's actually selling his lie. That's the part that bothers me. He has such hubris, Obama, that he thinks he's selling his big lie. Who's buying that act anymore? Can you tell me anyone? Apparently, his popularity has plummeted amongst blacks. Leftists don't like him. Liberals don't like him. So who is buying this guy's lie? I don't know. I don't know anymore. I don't know who believes a word he says. Uh, listen, to, you got to hear this one I'm talking about that set me off today about bullying. Listen to clip f uh, number six. The rugged individualism that <laughs> defines America has always been bound by a sheer set of values, yeah. an enduring sense that we're in this together, that America is not a place where we simply turn away from the sick or turn our backs on the tired, the poor, the huddled masses. It is a place sustained by the idea, I am my brother's keeper, I am my sister's keeper, that we have an obligation to put ourselves in our neighbor's shoes. Do see you? each other's common humanity. Is that right? Well, why don't you have some homeless in the White House? 
Why don't you stop abusing your, your office of the presidency and flying all over the world on golf trips? Why don't you tell your wife to stop taking so many vacations? Now, as far as that statement by Emma Lazarus that is uh, graven on a tablet within the pedestal on which the uh, Statue of Liberty stands, it's the New Colossus. And in it, she says, Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these the homeless tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Now, I grew up on that. I'm an immigrant son. I thought that was very, very touching. Of course, there was no welfare state when she wrote that. They were waiting for them with a lawsuit. There was no ACLU standing there with cockamamie eyeglasses and curly hair saying, here, you immigrant, you immigrant, me ACLU, just we, we sue for you. Yeah. Me immigrant, you racist, I sue with ACLU. They give it out in 50 languages now when they arrive. No, it was a little different when the new Colossus was written. A little different. No, no socialist nation, no welfare nation. What's he talking about? He's mixing things up, the rugged individuals. He goes from Teddy, Teddy Roosevelt now to, to, Emma Gold, to Emma Lazarus, all in one. No, America hasn't been bound by a shared set of values. It was shared by a, a shared set of work values. You're missing one work, Obama. A shared set of work values, not a shared set of con men values. An enduring sense that we're in this together. We're in this together when they come here and spit on our flag. They won't learn the language. They spit on our religion and our culture. That's a shared set of values. I'm supposed to take care of the world. Stop bullying me, Obama. We're not going to take it anymore. <laughs> Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. The rugged individualism that defines America has yeah. always been bound by a sheer set of values. Yeah, right. An enduring sense that we're in this together. Yeah, right. We're all brothers. That America yeah. is not a place where we simply turn away no. from the sick. No. Or turn our backs on the tired. Oh, no, the no. The poor, the huddled masses. It is a okay, place sustained right by... All right, once again, he's uh, lying because the statement, give me your tired, your poor, and your huddled masses, written by uh, Emma Lazarus, which is on the Statue of Liberty, was written before this was a welfare state. And while we may have compassion for the tired, the sick, or the huddled masses, can you honestly sit there, Mr. and Mrs. Progressive, and tell me that we can afford to take in all of the tired, the poor, and the huddled masses of the world? Can you honestly tell me we have the resources for that? Of the billions of people on earth, we can take in all of the Muslims from Africa who are being ejected. We can take in all of the Chinese who cannot find jobs. How can we afford them? Tell me how. All the Mexicans? How many more can we take in? Who's going to pay for it? You're going to pay for it out of your Social Security? How foolish can you be? How dumb can you be? Now, we are a nation of immigrants. That's true, but that has no meaning today. A nation of orderly immigration is different than a nation that has no borders. A nation whose borders have been broken by uh, Bill Clinton and now Barack Obama. Erased our border with Mexico. So they pour across the border as though they own us. They treat us like a doormat. They're marching in from Honduras, Guatemala, El Salvador, <clears throat> like we're a doormat that they can just wipe their feet on when they get here. Why are they coming here? You think they're coming here to work with their children? They're coming here to live off the fat of the land because they know that the liberal machine will feed them, clothe them, house them, educate them, medicate them. That's what they're coming here for. They're coming here to suck us dry. Now, let me tell you something else. I am an immigrant son. And that gives me the authority to talk about immigration more so than most people. But they didn't come here when this was a welfare state. They would rather have thrown themselves off a fire escape in the tenement they lived in than accept a dime in government handouts. They wouldn't take it. Now compare that to the mentality of the immigrant today. Lining up for everything free. Now why do you suppose most Americans oppose illegal immigration, in fact all immigration? To be very blunt. 
Why is it that the average American, virtually of any race, opposes immigration today? Is it because they're all bigots, they're not as far-seeing and as magnanimous as Barack Obama? No, that's not why, because they see what's going on around them with their own eyes. They see a country that's disappearing in front of their eyes. They see their own language disappearing. They see their culture disappearing. They don't like it. Does that make them xenophobic? Or does it make them patriots? Does it make them xenophobic because they love their own language and they love their own nation? Does it make them xenophobic because they don't like people who come here and are not willing to assimilate as once was the case? As I said to you, we were once a melting pot. Immigrants had to conform and con comply with the laws of the land and the mores of the land, more importantly. You know the old adage, when in Rome do as the Romans do? Now they come here, so do as they do. Speak their language. Oh, yeah, you speak their language, you're a racist on the bus. Go ahead. Maybe you'll be arrested for speaking English in another five years. Maybe it'll offend somebody. Maybe they'll make you rip the cross off your neck because it offends a Muslim or a Wiccan somewhere. That's the country you're living in. You're being bullied out of, out of your own country and out of your own life. And it's time for you to understand you're being bullied. And if you don't stand up, you'll have nothing left. You know, it reminds me of a scene out of a book written uh, in, 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 by a German author, Thomas Mann. Right after World War I, there was great social chaos in Germany. After Germany had lost World War I and was mercilessly torn apart uh, in the Treaty of Versailles, punished for a war they didn't really start, the Germans were destroyed. They took land away from them. They destroyed the German military. The society was in decay. It was falling apart. Thomas Mann wrote a short story entitled, God Sees the Truth But Waits. I remember reading it in college. I didn't quite understand it then, but I understand it now. And it opens with a scene on a tram in Germany at the time <clears throat> where there is social chaos, where the young people of Germany are causing a ruckus on the trolley car, cursing, screaming, yelling, pushing older people around, making havoc, in other words, in Germany at the time. Now, why am I mentioning God sees the truth but waits? Why am I mentioning a piece of literature? Because I am warning you as I sit here, I have an instinct for this. Unless this country is righted by the people themselves, we're liable to see something so terrible in this country you could never imagine it. And that something terrible could be a new Hitler. You say it could not happen here? The Germans never thought a Hitler could rise out of nowhere. And look what happened there. Now, why do you think Hitler rose in Germany? Because the communists were running naked, rampant in the streets, excuse me. They were beating people up. They were suppressing any speech they didn't like. They were street thugs. And you're not going to believe this and you're not going to like what you hear. But the brown shirts were gangs that were formed to control the communist street thugs who were threatening the average German. Did you know that? And look what that turned into. Look what that turned into in Germany. Look at the nightmare that evolved because the communists were out of control. And so I go back again to the disorder uh, that was portrayed in uh, that story, God Sees the Truth But Waits. I think it was a short story I read in college by Thomas Mann, and that, that scene on the, on the trolley car, does that not express to you what's going on in America today? Ferguson, Missouri, disorder caused by Obama, Holder, Al Sharpton. Wherever you turn, Baltimore, disorder, a city almost burnt to the ground, caused by this uh, uh, fire starter in chief, Obama, he did it attack the police, call the thugs victims, take a look at what happened. There's a society can only take disorder for so long, and eventually something happens. There is a reaction. Now, the reaction is not going to come from the Republican Party. They're part and parcel of the problem. You know that. They're stooges. They're puppets. They're lapdogs. Rubio is a lapdog of Ellison. Uh, that other one, whatever his name is, the, the weasel. Weasel, Cruz, Ted Weasel Cruz. He's a lapdog of this new trade agreement, so God knows who owns him. So I'm still hoping maybe Scott Walker will come along and show us some guts and some resolve and, and some love for our, our borders, language, and culture. I don't know really who's going to come along. Somebody else is going to come along. Somebody is going to come along and counter this meltdown of our nation. I don't know who it's going to be, but it will happen. These bullies will be stopped in their tracks. They have to be stopped in their tracks so we're all finished. It's that simple. That's how I see it. Let's go to the callers. WMAL, Washington, D.C. Emily, go ahead. You're up in the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Dr. Savage, you made a comment earlier that um, only old white men listen to you, and I just want to let you know that I'm a 20-something, I'm married, and I'm living in um, 
the liberal housewife suburbia of Washington, D.C. Um, I'm in college right now, and I'm a poli-sci major, and I want to say that you are definitely one of the reasons why I chose that major, because I would certainly hope to make a difference one day. I, I did not know um, that other people were out there that believed the same way that I did until I started listening to your radio station. So I just wanted right. to Right, that's that. exactly what the liberal socialist maniacs have done. They made everyone who sees it as it is think that there's something wrong with them, that they're the minority. We are the majority, damn it! And those sickos are a tiny minority! Those communists and those twisted sisters, they're a minute portion of American society, but they're bullying us. They're biting us in the ankles. They're threatening us with lawsuits. They're the minority, not us, and I'm sick of them. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I feel like... You've seen what goes on on college campuses with these little thugs, with these pig eyes walking around, threatening everybody? Little, little Nazi thugs pretending they're liberals? No one could say a word without the fear of a lawsuit or, or chanting or whistling or hissing. They're nothing. They're a tiny minority. It's time people stood up to them. Absolutely. Well, I, I'm sorry that you feel alone, but I, by the way, I, I want to correct one thing. I didn't say that only white men listening to me. I said it is alleged that only white males listen to talk radio. I said I love white males, but that's not the only audience. This show is number one in streaming radio in America with a 25 share of the audience. Rush has a 12 share by comparison. What does that mean? It means that 25% of all people who listen to streaming radio in America, talk radio that is, listen to Michael Savage. That's largely young people like yourself, incidentally. Thank you so much for doing what you do. Now, you're married, but are you allowed to read a novel, uh, Countdown to Mecca? Would your husband object if I sent it to you? My husband loves that I read and loves that I'm smart. So, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I'm just pulling your leg. Stay in the line. I'll send it out to you. It'll make a great Father's Day gift. If you have a father, you can give it to him. If not, you can read it yourself and give it to your husband. Let's go to the next caller. L line, 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 line. Oh, what am I doing here? 15 minutes after the hour. KSFO Radio, line three. Go ahead, please. Line three. Go ahead, please. Hello, Dr. Savage. <clears throat> Thank you so much for doing what you do. I'm just hanging out here yearning to be free. Quote. Thank you. And I wanted to tie together a few threads. You know, you, you raised a very uh, important point in your first hour about uh, that I don't think many people caught, certainly not at the time several years ago. Apparently, the International Socialist Union at that time tied its wagon to the Islamists. And this was about the time of uh, Tahrir Square, I believe. And uh, <clears throat> Oh, I'm very aware of the confluence of the Islamists and the socialists, and I know exactly why this is happening and how it's happening. In fact, I must tell you, I just finished a chapter of yet another book in which I cover that. So you go ahead, expound on it. I won't give away my own, my own writings on it, but there's clearly an issue here of wanting to dominate the pop, the overwhelming, overwhelm the culture from both sides. Yeah, and, and it seems to reinforce the whole uh, progressivism as insanity or stupidity because they're going to be the cannon fodder or the useful idiots that get chewed up fastest once they're uh, no longer useful. Yes, the Muslim fanatics will throw them off rooftops. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. They're already doing it. They're doing it in the Middle East, so why wouldn't they do it here? Anywhere. Why do we see American progressives defending Islam? Why do they make excuses for radical Islam's atrocities while branding anyone who criticizes them bigots? Why you do know, they hold conferences on terrorism and exclude anyone who might talk about the threat of radical Islamist sleeper cells within our borders while focusing on the threat from American Christians, conservatives, and patriots instead? These are very important questions. And I think probably, to your point, precisely that it goes to puppeteers and puppets and maybe clout. Well, pivot. let's talk about the, the chief puppeteer, George Soros. Why would a man who allegedly escaped the Nazi concentration camp be funding most of these confluences between Islamism and progressivism? Why would he be suing states now with a $9 million grant to make certain that illegal aliens can vote? Why does he do this? Why does he hate this country so much? Why is the Soros family public, number, public enemy number one in this country to most clear-thinking people? Tell me why. Probably because they've got uh, that Aztec disease, right? Or the, the uh, conquistador disease. You mean where they can never get enough gold? Is that it? There's not enough gold in the world to feed their illness? Yep. Damn straight. Do you agree with me that we need another UAC House of Un-American Activities Committee, or is that too much for us today? I think you're 
you're right, and and it's it's sad because um, it's it's been painted in such a. Uh, well, for, you know, let me make it very clear. HUAC was a very important instrument in America, and virtually everyone they outed actually was a communist. Incidentally, we see movie after movie about the poor Hollywood writers who threw themselves off buildings because they were picked on and they were <coughs> blacklisted. Tell me who's being blacklisted right now in America. I am being blacklisted in America, and I'm not throwing myself off a building so fast. I'm fighting back. I'm blacklisted by these SOB progressives in Hollywood, the SOB progressives on Fox News. I'm the one on the blacklist. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. It was you're tired, you're poor, and you're huddled masses, indeed. That's a very noble statement on the Statue of Liberty. And it was written at a time when there was no welfare state. Never forget the difference between a welfare state that gives away freebies to immigrants, not all of whom come here to work. No, they don't all come here to work. We know many of them work very, very hard. We are not blind. We are not deaf. We are not dumb. There are new houses going up near where I live, and I see who is toiling building them. I see it very well. But I also see that Michael uh, Iger of Disney was very draconian like the Aztecs. Uh, Bob Iger, sorry, pardon me. I was thinking of Michael, whatever his name was, of Disney. Bob Iger runs, uh, runs, it, runs it now, I think. And he forced IT workers at Disneyland to train counterparts from India who would then take their jobs at half the salary or such. So that's not about bringing in immigrants to work, is it? It's about bringing in immigrants to lower the cost of labor and to suck more money to the top. Apparently, $46 million a year isn't enough for him. Maybe he needs $86 million a year so he doesn't feel inferior and incompetent next to the parties, the guys at the parties who really raped the Treasury pretty good. They make billions. He only makes $46 million. He must feel like a pauper. So cut the cost a little bit more. Maybe the board will reward him even further. Throw out every American worker. Throw them out. Throw all Americans out of America. Make it a really safe country for immigrants. Get rid of every American born here. 855-407-282, Savage Nation, WABC in New York. Tina, go ahead. What's on your mind? Fire away. you got two minutes. Hi. Uh, uh, thank, you for, thank you for taking my call. I'm um, listening to you for 10 years, but I will be honest with you. I was afraid to call because I thought if my boss listens, what I have to say, I'm going to be fired. Um. I work. I used to work as a nurse, and mm -hmm. I was fired one time from a medical adult daycare because I refused to commit Medicaid fraud. Um, oh, in other words, as a nurse, they want you to fill out fake paperwork so they could all cash in on it? Right. So it, you always talk about um, adults bringing their children to this country. I want to tell you about kids bringing their parents. To this country. Yeah, of course. They get a nice free ride here, don't they? They, they? I know about the anchor babies law. You're talking about the anchor parents law, where they bring in their sick, sick parents and dump them on the country, and, and we have to give them a, a Rolls Royce care. I get it. I see it. I talk to doctors. I know what's going on. Not necessarily sick parents. They don't have to be sick. But if you're over 65 and you never work here, so you don't have a pension, when you have Medicaid through the whole country, not just my state, if you are a Medicaid person, right, you mm -hmm. are entitled, not just a regular health care, you're entitled to all the services. So, Oh, of course. I know all the good liberal social workers come to them and give them all the care they're entitled to. I love the word entitled to, don't you? Right, right. Who, enti who entitled them with anything? Who entitled them with anything? We're almost flat out of time in this segment. I'm sending you my new novel. It's not in Russian. It's in English called Countdown to Mecca. Maybe it'll be translated into Russian. I'm sure if Vladimir Putin read it, he'd love it. In fact, I would have sent him a free copy. I certainly wouldn't send a free copy to Hillary Clinton, who called him Hitler, looking to start World War III, along with Jeb Bush, looking to start World War III, that nincompoop. What a hope he is. What a great hope he is for America. That Jeb Bushman. I'll be right back. Be here or be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Nobody can get any relief. That's why they're all stoned out of their gourd on prescription drugs. 
Meanwhile, condemning the crack dealer on the street. They ought to condemn the doctor who gave him the, the, uh, the, the, the antidepressant. He's a bigger drug dealer than the crack dealer. Play it again. That's all. Oh, by the way, a reindeer in the Bay Area. It's beautiful. It's like Irish Spring. They won't report it in the paper, though. It counters the whole myth of, uh, you know, that it may never be rain again. I guess Jerry Brown did a, did a rain dance somewhere in Sacramento. Imagine him naked on the roof of the state capitol praying for rain. Actually, in Jerry Brown's case, I imagine he'd do a, a rain dance praying there would be n- never be rain. So they continue to gouge the taxpayer and build those speed trains to nowhere and talk about global warming. Meanwhile, the idiot in the White House, the criminal bully in the White House, you're not going to believe this story. I'm not making this up. This could come out of only a mad comic, but it's true. Obama's EPA is targeting greenhouse gas emissions from commercial aircraft. The idiot moron psychopaths, the college girls, will restrict greenhouse gas emissions from commercial jets. The latest in a long line of steps the dumb house has taken to address so-called climate change. Now, if they would begin by limiting greenhouse gas emissions from the gangsters Air Force One, Air Force Two and Air Force Three, I would say, okay, then there's some validity to it. If Al Capone's plane, if Al Capone's personal plane were to, let's say, fly on uh, banana peels or something to that effect, I would say, okay, at least they are not hypocrites. But they're going to restrict greenhouse gas emissions from your jets? How are they going to do that? The so-called EPA, the bullies in the EPA, the idiots in the EPA, will begin crafting standards and expects to formally adopt them early next year. You see, U.S. aircraft account for about 11% of greenhouse gas emissions, the agency said. And so they want to impose restrictions on the aircraft sector. I think they ought to apply it to our fighter jets, frankly, first. Because the fighter jets are terrible emitters. I mean, if you've been on an aircraft carrier and watched those F.A. 18 Hornets take off and land, I mean, you see the, the, the flame shooting out of the back of that plane. Do you realize what that's doing to the environment? And while you're at it, you ought to restrict greenhouse gas emissions from guns. I mean, there's probably not a greater greenhouse gas uh, emitter than a gun. Think every time a cop fires a bullet on a target range, every time one of our uh, soldiers or Marines learns how to shoot a rifle, aren't they destroying the environment? Think of that, the waste of energy. And think of what could be done there if only one of the cockamamie crazy lawyers unleashed himself on the courts. This is an example of bullying, not only bullying, but insane bullies. You know, there used to be an old phrase, the inmates are running the asylum. In this case, they're bullying inmates running the American asylum. These are not just inmates that you can laugh at. These are very dangerous, drug-addicted inmates who are bullying everyone in sight. They are dangerous, drug-addicted bullies, and they're bullying everybody with threats of lawsuit, lawsuits. So Air Force One that takes him golfing or Michelle on vacation, I think that that should be reined in. See, this administration is using EPA and his other fascist agencies to destroy one industry at a time. They want to take down one industry at a time. Now, you're worried about greenhouse gas emissions. Then why did Air Force One and Air Force Two be used last year because Michelle wanted to fly in a different plane as her husband? How about that for a air, uh, uh, air greenhouse gas emission? Michelle and her entourage in Air Force One. Obama on Air Force Two. Why? Why? Tell me why. How about the fleet that Congress uses t- to jet around the world? How about Nancy Pelosi's use of military jets? Yeah, okay, you get the picture. It's the mother of all shakedowns. It is the largest theft of wealth the world will ever have seen. The science is not clear at all. There's no science here. It's Lysenkoism. It's invented science. East Anglia University manipulated data to reflect global warming when there was no global warming. You understand that? They just changed the hockey stick into a, a, a putty ball. The only reason Obama has waged a war on coal is for what reason? To make sure the gangsters in the green business profit from it. The gangsters in the green energy business have profited like you've never seen in your life because they're bullies and thieves. We're going to talk about bullies and thieves when I return right here on The Savage Nation. 
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Wherever you go, you will encounter people who doubt your very existence. Folks who believe that hardworking families with strong values don't exist on the south side of Chicago or in Detroit or in El Paso or in Indian country or in Appalachia. They don't believe you are real. So she's become one of the chief bullies now in America. Whatever happened to the quiet first lady, the dignified first lady, the first lady who did civic things? How did she suddenly become such a bully? Uh, any other questions? Because I have the answers. We're talking about bullying, and we're talking about the bully pulpit. In this case, it truly is inhabited by bullies. 855-400-7282 is the phone number. We're talking about many topics, mainly bullying. And everyone who gets on the show will get a free copy of my novel, Countdown to Mecca, perfect for Father's Day, which is only, what, two weeks away. And I hope you celebrate fathers because it's all we've got left. Whether you like your father or not, he's your father. He ain't heavy, father. He's my father. Remember that one from Boys Town? He ain't heavy, father. He's my brother. I used to love that one. I never knew what it meant. They'd always touch me, that Boys Town thing. I never knew what, like, the kid was carrying another guy in the home, and he used to say, he ain't heavy, father. He's my brother. That was a beautiful organization, Boys Town. Maybe some of the left-wing vermin now can uncover some crime committed against boys in Boys Town. To, to take away the, the dream that we had of some decent people on earth. Let's see, they've destroyed the Catholic Church and turned it into a, a useless organ. What else can they go after now? They've trampled our flag. They've trampled our country. What's left? Tell me what's left. These bullies. I'd like to know when there's going to be a counter-bullying in this country. Man, I'd like to see an army of 10 million counter these bullies. I'd love to see them stand up and scream in their faces. You know, wherever I go, I run into bullies, whether it's a nasty Prius driver on the highway trying to cut me off in the right lane with an Obama-Biden bumper sticker from 2008. Everywhere I turn, there's a bully. This morning, for example, I went to the supermarket with my dog, Teddy. And I'm shopping, not, bo not bothering anybody. And I'm checking out. It was just jammed in the supermarket. All of the mothers were getting their coffee and giving their children uh, donuts and coffee before sending them off with their current medication to to the government school. And I swear to God, I'm standing on the checkout line. I had a lot of items, like two bags worth. And there was a woman behind me, middle-aged, decently dressed, 40 years old. Did you ever get someone who tries to push you through the, the thing that's just moving with the turn? It's moving like with your stuff on it. She has to put her coffee right. I'm talking an inch away from your stuff. And you're not through unloading your cart. And I look at her and say, excuse me, lady, I'm not finished yet. Could you take your flowers and coffee? I don't want to hurt your flowers and spill your coffee. She says, oh, my, you have nice radishes. I said, okay, fine. She said, my, my radishes were nice, very nice. All right, so she takes back the flowers and coffee and lets me have the conveyor belt back. Meanwhile, the clerk is ringing and ringing and zinging, and I'm moving up to the cash thing. And you know there's a little shelf right next to where you slide your card? where most normal people put their wallet or whatever they took the card out of, where you sign the, the bill. This woman puts her hot coffee cup on that shelf. I look at her. I said, lady, what's wrong with you? Why are you pushing like this? You know what she said? Nothing. Another drug addict in Marin County. Another Stepford wife. Another drug-addicted Stepford wife in Marin County. There are bullies everywhere, on the low level, on the high level. We're living in a new age. Yesterday I talked about the millennials boy did i get did i get heat for that one they said you can't say all millennials are bad i said i'm talking as a social commentator and i still allege that the millennials will turn out to be the worst generation in american history the beatniks gave birth to the hippies the hippies gave birth to the yuppies the yuppies gave birth to the millennials they're the end line of the beatnik and the millennials are without conscience. They're like the Khmer Rouge of uh, China or of, uh, more specifically, like Cambodia. I don't mean they're actually going to throw you into a grave. I don't mean they're going to kill you. But they're like the Khmer Rouge. They, ha they seem to have no conscience. They seem to be zombie-like. No care, no feelings. They have no emotions. 
They have. They seem to have no emotions other than getting what they want. From the me generation to the I generation. Seems that the I generation, the iPhone, came along about the same time. So I'm not very optimistic that this generation is going to save the country, incidentally. Going back to that question. I think they'd roll over to anyone who, who raises their voice to them. They've been raised by bullies in the schools. They're intimidated by everybody and everything. And they have no feelings whatsoever for senior citizens in particular. So if you think that Obamacare is going to come along and save you, and the millennial has a choice between pulling your plug or keeping you alive, get back to me on that one. WABC in New York, Line 9, go ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Yeah, I think uh, Obama has bullied his last two, his two appointments to the Supreme Court to leak information about pending decisions to him. You think that he's getting information from Sotomayor, the most brilliant Latina in the history of the universe? And, and that other one, the, the bowling setter, whatever her name is. Yeah. In my day, she would have. The other, in my day, the most she could have done was run a pickle store on Rivington Street. I forget her name. What a Supreme Court justice that one is. I think. What you you think that they're leaking to him? Yes, because I don't think he would have made those statements the other day if he knew that he. You're talking about him threatening the Supreme Court from uh, while he was in Germany. We have that sound by Robert. Let's listen to the bully in chief talking from Germany. Under well-established statutory uh, interpretation uh, approaches that uh, have been repeatedly employed, not just by liberal Democratic judges, but by conservative uh, judges like uh, uh, some on the current Supreme Court, yeah, like you interpret a statute name. based on what the intent and meaning and the overall structure of the statute uh, provides for. And so All right. this he, uh, should he, be. He's telling them how to interpret the law. You hear this? Now he's suddenly on the Supreme Court. He's the Supreme Supreme Justice, the bully in chief. He's committing statutory rape by doing this. He's trying to rape the Supreme Court in advance. He's scaring them that he's going to do something to them. My God, what a piece of work this thing is. All right. I get the picture. I get the, most people don't care. The millennials don't even hear what I'm saying. They're listening to, uh, I don't know, what they're, they don't listen to talk radio. We hear, that it's a, we hear that talk radio is aimed only at the dying population of old white men. Well, hey, old white men, welcome to the Savage Nation. Let's enjoy the uh, fall together. Are you kidding me? That's the only audience for talk radio? Who do you believe? That's true? How do you explain that I have a 25 share on devices? Who's listening to me on devices? 70-year-olds or 20-year-olds? Who's listening to Michael Savage, the most listened to streaming talk radio show in the United States of America? Who's listening to me, the millennials or the perennials? Who's listening to me? Who do you think's listening to me on iPhones and Androids and things like that nature? The young millennials who know what's going on, the very few who do, the very few who are homeschooled, the very few who are Christian, the very few who understand what patriotism is, the very few who come from a military or a police family, they're the backbone of America. Not the drug-addicted left-wing fanatics who've been bullied into submission. That's who I'm talking about. Don't tell me that the only people listening to this radio show are old people. And if it was, so what? You should be ashamed if you're an old person? Suddenly being older is, is a shame in America? What, it became a, a, a thing of pride to be an 18-year-old moron? No, I don't think so. End up to the progressive... Islamic bullies in this country who are going to kill all of us. Stand up to the gangsters in the White House and their surroundings. Stand up to the progressive phonies who are bullying you at every turn. Now, many of you don't believe this is happening because the media continues to bend over backwards to support a president who will not even say the word Islamic when he talks about the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. They call themselves ISIS, the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. And yet this gangster in the White House won't even use the word Islamic. They call themselves Islamic, but he says they aren't. Nevertheless, in this country, in every conceivable space, from immigration policy to law enforcement to education to social policy to the military, Islam is accommodated and defended while Christianity and Judaism are attacked. Left-wing publications print completely false stories about university campus rapes, military rapes that don't exist while ISIS forces eight-year-old girls to marry if they're Muslim and become sex slaves if they aren't. Where are the feminists who are outraged over these atrocities? Why aren't gay activists marching in the streets over ISIS throwing homosexuals off rooftops? 
I'll tell you why. They're too busy bullying Christian bakeries and pizzerias out of business for not wanting to bend at the knee to their homosexual weddings. Meanwhile, the Obama bullies have refused to curb illegal immigration through our southern border or to deport them once they're caught in violation of the bully's oath. But let me tell you something. Illegal immigrants from Central and South America are not the biggest immigration threat facing us. Much more dangerous are the hundreds of thousands of Muslims this administration has brought in through its refugee program from war-torn Muslim countries such as Somalia and now Syria. What possible reason can there be for admitting more Muslim refugees than Christian when Christians are being slaughtered by the thousands of the new Holocaust in the Middle East? Why bring in the people sworn to kill us and leave those being killed to fend for themselves? Because the bullies want it that way. It's divide and conquer. They're very, very clever, these sorority girls, aren't they? This is the Savage Nation. Be here or be nowhere. I'm Michael Savage. Borders, language, culture. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage.